Assalamu alaikum kids. Uh, today we are talking on the slot harmonics and uh, for those who have no idea uh, what are slot harmonics and uh, we have talked about the space harmonics before if you remember uh, the discussion we did on for the uh, space, uh, space harmonics and if you remember space harmonics were those harmonics which was being produced because of the distribution of the winding. So this was because of the distributed uh, winding over there inside your uh, machine and you were having uh, a lot of uh, harmonics over there and because of those harmonics you were having those saddle effects and the machine was actually crawling over there. Uh, I remember over here one thing very important I am not discussing the time harmonics over there why because time harmonics are those harmonics which are being produced because of the supply which means they are inside the supply. But what I mean by this that the supply which you are going to give to your induction motor or any three phase machine uh, that is actually having a revolving magnetic field and all sort of that problems or uh, phenomena inside it, it's going to have harmonics inside it. It means the supply is not just 50 hertz or 60 hertz, it is something having odd multiples of the uh, fundamental frequency also inside. Okay, let's if you go on towards the uh, basic information that what is actually slot harmonics, as the name suggests that uh, the slot harmonics is actually going to be produced inside any machine which are going to have slots. And by slots, I mean that the slots which are on the stator side or on the rotor side. So this discussion which we are going to do today is actually applicable on rotors and stators as well. Similarly, just like it was applicable in case of space harmonics. Now, if I have a, uh, let me just make a small machine. Let me have a simple stator and I'm going to make a very simple stator over here. And that stator is uh, going to have, I'm just going to make like 12 slots over there. So I'm not going to make them open slots or whatever. I'm just going to show them that there are the slots over there. So if I have like 12 slots over there, this is uh, the 12 slots over there. So this means these will be two over here. Remember one thing, whenever you are trying to draw a slot diagram or something like that, please make them symmetrical so that they are a little. Now here in this case, uh, the number of slots, since they are on the stator side, they are 12 over there. And I'm discussing a machine which is actually having uh, two poles over there. And certainly, since the number of phases inside my machine is actually m, uh, so is actually three, so m value, which is actually the number of phases over here, is this. Now, since there are two poles inside this machine, and uh, I am discussing a machine which is going to have two poles. So certainly, if uh, two poles are going to be created at any instant of time, so what is going to happen? Supposingly, uh, the uh, cross and dots arrangement. I am not going to go in that detail at present. So what happens over here? Supposingly. The north poles is actually having that flux coming on from over here and that flux is actually coming on from over here. So this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these six teeth over there, these are teeth actually over there. So from these teeth, the north pole lines are actually coming in and uh, when these north pole lines actually reach the south pole, so they are actually going to be uh, taken up where uh, this will be actually the uh, motion over here and this will be the south pole over here so this will be the south pole over here the purpose of actually making these lines over here is actually showing you that in this case as you can see over there this is the teeth number one this is teeth number two this is teeth number three this is teeth number four this is teeth number five and teeth number six so actually in practically there are like six teeth from where because teeth are actually the point from where the flux are uh, going to flow towards the rotor. Please remember slots are not the point from where the flux is actually going to flow. Slots are those points from where the conductors are going to be placed and inside those conductors the flux lines are going to be produced. So if I go deep inside in any slot over there, so if supposingly there is going to be a cross over here, so what this means actually that it's going to produce flux lines around it and these flux lines are actually shown over here as those north poles over there. So it's actually going to be having that uh, north pole lines placed over there. So over here what this means that they are actually going to be six teeth from where the flux lines are actually going to enter and certainly what I mean by the teeth over here where actually the slots are not there. Now these are circular slots or enclosed slots or it can be any other shape over there but if I make this total diagram in a developed diagram fashion supposingly let me make a simple color over here 
So if I want to show those 12 slots or 12 teeths over there, I can show them over here as, uh, let me just uh, make them over here. This is I'm making open slots because it's easy to actually show over here. So I'm trying to make the same number of, uh, uh, the same size of actually the teeth and the same size of the, uh, so if this is the uh, rotor, uh, this is the stator side over here, uh, this is the stator side over here and this is going to be the rotor side over there. So certainly the teeth of over here, here, supposedly this is the first teeth over here, this is the second teeth, this is the third teeth, this is the fourth teeth, this is the fifth teeth, this is the sixth teeth, this is the seventh teeth and uh, the, certainly uh, if I continue to make it on this will be uh, certainly this will be the 8th teeth, 9th teeth, 10th teeth and uh, if I will make another one and then another one so this will be the 11th and 12th. Now one thing very important over here is this that if this is the 12th teeth over there this one if this is shown half over here this will be also shown half over here because these are uh, actually uh, these are the slots over there. So what I am telling over here that half of the slot is here in this shaded region and half of the slot is here in this region. It's totally up to you. You want to show full on that side or you want to show full on that side. It's totally up to you. Here I have shown them over here as half over there and half over there. Now in the end of the day, uh, story I will tell you that how I am going to actually keep them over here in, on one side and the whole story will change. Now, this is the 12 slots on the same machine and now if I am going to draw a simple uh, waveform and what this waveform would be since this is a two pole machine. Now two poles means that exactly at the six teeth just like I shown over here after the six teeth, uh, after the six teeth half of the slot because this slot and this slot they will be empty. Remember one thing, this slot and this slot, they will be empty, which means that they will not be producing any cross and dots over there. You can go through this detail uh, from the machine's course, we have got in much detail at that point. Now, after the six slots, so this means after the six teeth, the seventh teeth is empty and then afterwards the uh, slot is empty and then afterwards the teeth are actually having that flux over there. So if this is the first teeth, second teeth, third teeth, fourth teeth, remember this is the teeth I have drawn over there. These are the slots over here in which the conductors are going to be placed. This is the slots in which conductors are going to be placed which I am marking over here as something. So you can place some strip conductors or some round conductors, whatever that case may be, to order to design of your machine. Now, if I'm interested in having six uh, uh, teeth over there, so since I have taken half over here, so certainly this means I will be having half over here like this, because half of that slot over there. Now, what I mean by this one, that uh, this slot and this slot is going to be having some effect over there, certainly because it's having some conductor over there, but it's not contributing anything, but still it is having a slot and inside that slot there is going to be a conductor placed over there. Now the point over here of actually drawing this diagram in developed fashion, it is a developed diagram in which I have opened the whole 12 slots which were in circular shape, I have made them over here. Now I am going to concentrate my focus over here on this first half because I am only going to draw it for the first half. Now if assuming that your flux waveform or the MMF waveform which was produced because of the slots or because of the space distribution was actually a sinusoidal. I'm assuming that here in this case the value of G if I find out over here this will be equal to uh, if you divide by 12 by 6 and over there this comes out to be 2 so this is going to be G value equal to 2. So this is actually telling you that for each phase slots per pole per phase you are going to have two slots over there slots per pole per phase. Now with G value I'm assuming that I'm getting a pure sinusoidal space MMF inside the air gap. But if that space, uh, if this is shown over here as a sinusoidal, so certainly this is going to be like this. Uh, sorry about this one. This is a little away from that zero crossing line. So this is like this. And certainly if I do it back, certainly this will be something over here like this. Now I'm not concerned with this area because this will be exact replica of this one. So I'm going to concentrate my focus on this one. Now this is the MMF over here, let me make it a color, this is the MMF which is produced inside the air gap between the stator and the rotor and I'm assuming 
that the distribution of the bindings or the distribution of the slots or whatever, the G value, despite being true, it is still producing a sinusoidal MMF and it's having no. Because if I take harmonics here in this waveform, the whole equation will be very difficult to decide. So I'm taking it as a sinusoidal MMF. Now on this sinusoidal MMF, since we know, let me just change this color now. If I just zoom in over there, since flux is going to travel from this region, come down from the teeth. So here in this region, and if the rotor is just close to this line, supposingly this is that rotor line over there, and this is the rotor placed over there, the reluctance in this region, the reluctance in this region is going to be small as compared to the reluctance in this region. Why? Because here there is more air gap, here there is a small air gap. So this is the air gap contraction factor we have been talking about a lot over there. So if the air gap is uniform because over here I have taken open slots because this gives me a leverage that the air gap is increased so certainly the reluctance is going to be more increased in this point it is certainly going to be more over here then going to be smaller in this region then going to be larger in this region then again small so this will go on so what will happen actually if this was a uniform air gap with no disparities over there or any air gap contraction factor so the waveform that you are actually going to get off the MMF is going to be something like this. If I just draw, uh, supposingly, let me draw this one over here. I'm trying to draw this one, these lines over here. And these lines are actually going to tell me that how the MMF is going to actually change over here. Okay, now based on this blue color lines which I have drawn over there, now since if I just zoom in over there in this region, here the reluctance is large because this is a slot over there despite it's not contributing anything or whatever but since flux lines are actually going to go so here there is going to be a larger reluctance so what is going to happen the mmf waveform is going to be a little bit decreased over there at this point and then afterwards in the second that is actually a teeth the first teeth over there since here the reluctance is actually going to be a little bit smaller so what will happen it will be increased a little and then next one it will be again in decrease then again it will be decreased then again increase then again decrease so this will actually go on the point like this so what is this green color waveform this mmf over here that was in purple color or red color over here in this diagram this was the MMF if the uniform air gap was there. Now this time because slots are there and slots are going to change the air gap at every different point. If assuming that slot size or slot width and these teeth width they are both are the same. So certainly this is telling you that the green color waveform is actually the MMF which is having harmonics introduced because of the slots over there. I'm again repeating this is because of the reluctance change where there is a teeth the reluctance is small so you can see over there here the reluctance is small the flux actually increases over there now in the next case over here if you can see the reluctance is large so whatever it's a dip over there then afterwards there is again an increase so what is happening over here by having slots inside your stator this is again one thing very important this is again still the stator i have not taken the rotor mmf we will just carbon copy the results of the stator into the result rotor also but over here this are the stator so this is the stator mmf over here now if this stator mmf is there and let me just uh, extend this one so I'm not concerned with the second half because you can just take that one and then do it again with yourself over there. What this means actually that if I'm going to extend these lines a little, so if I am extending these lines, oh uh, sorry about this one, this is actually not getting exactly straight, so let me just... Uh, So if these are the
So if these are the uh, same uh, lines over here which are extending from each teeth over there and if I make this uh, waveform of the fundamental over here and that is again that fundamental, yeah, sorry about this one, uh, this is not going, okay, okay, sorry. Okay, so this is the fundamental over there. Now what this is telling me actually that with the fundamental, if this is the fundamental waveform over here, this is the MMF and I could call it as one, this is the fundamental and on this one, uh, there is also, if I use another color over there, and on that one, there is going to be like this. So this green color waveform is actually the harmonic which is introduced inside it and the pink color or actually the purple color used over here is actually the main fundamental over there. So this green color and that pink color waveform if you combine them together certainly the amplitudes are not according to some scale. So if you add them together you are going to get this green color waveform in the topmost line over there. So what is happening actually you have a fundamental and then you have harmonics which are because of the slots and these are because of the status slots over there. So what is happening actually you are getting harmonics because of the stator slot so in practicality when you are actually going to have an MMS sensor supposedly or a flex sensor over there inside your uh, air gap you are actually going to see all these uh, small harmonics riding on it and certainly this number of harmonics is actually going to be having a linkage with the number of slots over there. Now if you see closely this diagram which I have drawn over there. How many cycles are there inside this diagram? I am talking about the harmonics over there. Now if you see over here how many half cycles are there, just post half cycles over there. I will take this in this one and this one a little bit after consideration. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now 11 half cycles are there and this one and this one, this one and this one they are going to contribute to 1 because this is half of over here, half of over here. So this is going to be 12 half cycles included over there. So what this means actually, what was the slot over there? There were 6 slots over there or 6 teeth over there. So this means that in this machine if there were 6 slots per pole pitch because this is a two pole machine you got how many you got 12 half cycles of MMF harmonics over there this is very important I'm going to go into count over there this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and then half or half over there 12 so now you can understand if I have taken this half over here on the other side it would be have been difficult to understand but here I have drawn this one half over here half over here so this is taking half from over there so these are simple 12 half cycles over there and these are for the harmonics over there. So these are 6 slots per pole pitch and you are getting 12 half cycles of the MMF harmonic. Now what this means also actually that this is actually the half cycle of MMF fundamental because this was one pink color over there so this was actually half cycle of MMF fundamental and it had 12 half cycles Sorry about this one. so this is 12 half cycles of the MMF harmonics over here now we can extend this very easily over there. So if this is one cycle of MMF fundamental, what this will be? This will be 12 full cycles of MMF harmonics. Very simple. Previously it was half cycle. Now this is 12 full cycle. So what this means over there, if I will extend this green color curve on this one over here like this, whatever that shape may be, so that will be 12 full cycles of MMF harmonic. 
Now, why I'm trying to actually do this one? Because the MMF waveform, which is actually the fundamental, it is having a frequency. So, that frequency, we know over there, that frequency is equal to F over there. So, if I'm getting 12 full cycles of MMF over there, so this means, generically speaking, if I want to find out the f of s so what is f of s over here don't confuse this one with the synchronous speed over there this is the slot harmonic frequency so f of s is going to be equal to f1 fundamental multiplied by number of slots divided by p by 2 this is a generic expression you can easily find it out what is s divided by p by 2 what were the number of slots inside your machine previously we just did now it was having 12 slots and out of those 12 slots what was p it was 2 so just plug in this equation this is 12 divided by 2 so this was equal to 12 into the fundamental frequency why because there are one cycle of the fundamental is producing 12 full cycles of the mmf body. so this means you are getting actually the factor of 12 over there in your frequency over there so this means that your slot harmonic frequency is equal to 12 times the fundamental frequency of the MMF waveform over here. This is very important. Fs, that is actually the slot harmonic frequency, is equal to F1, that is actually the fundamental MMF waveform, multiplied by S divided by P by 2. This S divided by P by 2, this can also be written as F1 multiplied by 2S by P. Same thing actually, just taking that P by 2, uh, 2 on the numerator side so this is f1 multiplied by 2s by 2 okay now since you have got this uh, frequency of the uh, slot harmonic frequency and this is telling me that okay there is going to be a 12 machine so there are 12 slots over there and you are getting approximately 12 over there but still this is not telling me that what type of harmonics I am going to get inside my machine. So what is happening actually if I go again back to my diagram or this diagram which I am talking about the green color diagram over here the green color waveform which is actually a sinusoidal waveform and on that sinusoidal waveform there is another sinusoidal waveform that is actually being multiplied. So if this is the MMF waveform the flux density waveform inside the air gap is also going to be the very same because what is uh, B and the MMF uh, linkage that is actually just with the area or whatever that number of turns over there is there so B is actually also going to be of the same shape so can I write this B or simply uh, the value of B over there or BH over there that will be equal to BM sine of theta what is BM sine of theta? This is actually the amplitude that is actually changing. So if this is the fundamental, so the green red color one or the pink color one over here, shown over here, is BM sine of theta. But the harmonic BH, which I am more interested in, is going to be having a multiplication of sine 2s by p into theta. This is very important. Now how this is coming on? This one, Bm sine of theta is actually the fundamental waveform, which is actually changing because this angle is actually theta and this theta has nothing to do with the time, it is something to do with the space that is actually changing because here the theta is actually changing from 0 to 360 degrees over there. So Bm sine of theta over here, this is the fundamental MMF waveform produced inside the air gap over there. Then multiplying it by sine 2s by p over there. Now how this is being done over there, if I go back on my equation over there, that was actually this form. So if I am interested in omega s, what is omega s? That will be the radius frequency. This will be equal to omega 1 multiplied by 2s by p. And I hope I don't need to go into that detail. That theta is equal to omega t. So you can put that theta inside that equation. So this is very simply 2s by p into theta over there. So over here in this equation, I have sine 2s by p into theta over there. So what this means actually that uh, the the harmonic pH is actually going to be equal to, I can write its equation as Bm sine of theta into sine of 2s by p into theta. This equation is very important because this is telling me that the harmonic MMF 
that is actually being produced inside the air gap. I am not talking about the fundamental at present. I am only talking about the harmonic. And what is that harmonic? That harmonic is this green color waveform. This harmonic is actually that green color waveform which I am talking about. So this is that BH which I am talking about. Here, this green color one shown in this diagram is actually the result of having the fundamental plus the harmonic. Here, this one is actually BH which is actually having the harmonic only inside it and to find out that harmonic, it's not just simple harmonic, it is having its amplitude also changing. What is harmonic over there? Harmonic is actually having the fundamental frequency multiplied by the fun, uh, whatever harmonic number. Supposingly it is 9, it is 11, it is 13 or whatever. But here in this case, the harmonic, the amplitude is also changing. Other is amplitude will equal same rather. If it was not changing, then certainly the formula that was just written over there would be equal to BH equal to BM into sine 2S by P into theta over there. But here in this case, its amplitude is also changing. So I am going to have it by BM sine of theta. This BM sine of theta is actually the amplitude that is actually changing. And as far as the frequency is concerned, the, the that is actually coming on over there is actually 2S by pi into theta over there. So the total frequent uh, harmonic content over there that is BH over there is equal to BM sine of theta into sine 2s by p into theta. Now if you see over here very closely inside this relation, this relation is equal to having BS by, uh, let me just go into this detail a little. Okay, yes, this one is equal to, so this one is the B harmonic, so I can apply very easily sine theta into sine theta, I can use the cosine term equation over there, that is the product sum over there, so this I can write it as bm by 2, brackets open, so I can write this one as cos, and this one would be equal to uh, 2s by p into theta minus theta minus cos 2s by p theta plus theta and black square. Now if I just open this one a little bit more, so this can be written as bm by 2 cos 2s two by p minus 1 and then theta outside. So this is just simple 2s by p plus 1 and theta. Now this, this is very simple over there and this is telling you what? That your harmonic frequency that is bh is equal to having a uh, omega equal to 2s by p minus 1 and 2s by p plus 1. So what you have done just now that the previous waveform, this one was this green color harmonic waveform, it is the MMF, it's also for the BH over there. So this has been converted into two sums. One is BM by 2, that is actually the amplitude, I am not concerned with that at present, I am only concerned with the frequency because I want to find out that what harmonics are present inside it over there and over here this is telling me what is theta, theta is that angle that is actually sweeping through the space over there and here this 2s by p minus 1 and 2s by p plus 1 is actually telling me that what is going to be the order of that harmonic. So this equation is easily telling me that the order of harmonics which are going to be produced because of the slotting. This is because of the slotting. This is very important. This is because of only the slotting. So this is going to be given as 2s by p plus minus 1. Okay. This is very important. Order of harmonics after evaluating the BH and converting that equation of b and sine of theta into sine 2s by p into theta into this form, the order of harmonics which you are getting over here is 2s by p plus minus 1. Now what this means actually, <coughs> uh, sorry, this means actually that if you are going to have, let me just change the color a little, if you have a machine that is going to have status slots equal to 24, number of poles are 4, <coughs> so the order of harmonics <coughs> is equal to 2 into 24 divided by 4 plus minus 1 and if you evaluate this, this is actually going to be 6, so this is going to be 12 plus minus 1. 
So what this is telling me, the order of harmonics is going to be either 13 or either 11. <coughs> and this is true because this is going to be odd harmonics always. It's not going to be having even harmonics because for obvious reasons. So this 13 is coming on from the positive and 11 is coming on from the negative. That's why I'm putting a superscript over there. So this is 13 plus and this is 11 negative. And I hope I don't need to repeat the space harmonics uh, derivations we did it for that if it is going to come on from the positive sign this is going to move in the positive direction and this one is going to move in the negative direction that is of the fundamental so what this is telling me that your machine had six, uh, 24 slots in the stator and you had four number of holes so because of the slots on your stator, you are going to get 13th harmonic, which will be moving in the same direction that is of the stator. And there will be an 11th harmonic that will be moving in the opposite direction of NS. So what I mean by this, if you have a stator and that stator magnetic field is moving by speed NS because that is actually the fundamental. And at the very same time, because of the harmonics, it will have another component inside it and it is a harmonic MMF which is going to move by NS by 13 and I don't need to prove it that if you have harmonics over there certainly this means that its speed is going to be NS by the order of the harmonics over there in this case this is 13 so this is NS by 13 in case if it is 11 then it will be NS by 11 so the in this stator aware please remember I'm only sticking inside the stator at present I'm not going inside the rotor at present so in the stator you are going to have NS by 13 which is going to move in the same direction and at the very same time you are going to have another harmonic which is going to be opposite and this will be NS by 11. So because of the slotting now these are three fields certainly their magnitude is going to be different I'm not concerned with their magnitude at present because what I'm going to do with this one because what has happened the stator has produced 24 slots and because of those four poles it has produced a harmonic which is called as NS by 13 which is moving in the positive direction and it has produced NS by 11 that is moving in the opposite direction of the fundamental. This is just the stator at present. As at present I have not analyzed the rotor. Before I analyze the rotor let me just do one thing very importantly over there. We know that the harmonics move it by the speed over there. So if I want to find out a generic expression, if I want to find out the speed of the magnetic field, I am using some abbreviations over there, I hope this does not. So speed of the magnetic field due to slot harmonics this will be equal to ns divided by 2s by p plus minus 1. This is a very generic expression. So the speed of the magnetic field due to slot harmonics is going to be equal to ns divided by 2s over p plus 1. Now one thing, one change over here which I can do very easily over there because we know <coughs> the order of harmonics, the order of harmonics, is equal to 2s by p plus minus 1. Now this equation can be changed into one and in your book they have also written this one. We know what is m. What m is the number of phases. m is the number of phases. And what is g? g is the number of slots per pole per phase. So what would be mg? mg would be the number of slots, slots sorry, per pole. And what is s by p? s by p is also the very same. You are dividing the number of slots by the number of poles. This gives you the number of slots per pole. So what this means, mg is the same as s by p. So what this means that you can write the order of harmonics. as 2mg plus minus 1. 
This is also one expression. Some books also use this one. 2mg plus minus 1. So in some numericals or some equations, if you are not given S or whatever, you are just given G over there. So you can easily find out the order of harmonics. Again, this is the slotting harmonics which are being produced over there. Now, since we all know every time, in this, at least in this course, we are always going to have the number of phases equal to 3. So this means if I just plug in the value of m equal to 3, so this will be equal to 6g plus minus 1 and this will be for three phase machine so the order of harmonics for three phase machines is going to be 2 6g plus minus 1 over there now coming on to this point that if you are going to have harmonics being produced because of the stator as well and because of the rotor slots as well so let me just take one example over there so if I have one example, supposingly, if I am going to take a four pole machine, let me just take a four pole machine. This is a four pole, certainly an induction machine. The number of slots inside the stator in this machine is 24. The number of rotor slots in this machine is 28. So now what is going to happen because of this, each one of them, the stator slots and the rotor slots, they are going to produce their slotting harmonics. And if I talk about the stator first, so the order of harmonics in the stator, the order of harmonics, this will be equal to, I am just going to use the same formula, uh, not the G or whatever that vector over there, you can use it in some other numerical. This will be equal to 2SS divided by P plus minus 1. So this will be equal to 2 multiplied by 24 divided by, since this is a 4 pole machine. So this will be plus minus 1. We just evaluated this is equal to 12 plus minus 1. And you, if you take it on, this will be equal to 12 plus 1, 13. This will be plus sign. And 13 minus, uh, sorry, 12 minus 1, this will be 11. I get it. So this means that in this machine, just like we have done previously, for this 24 slot on the stator side, it's going to produce 13th harmonic, which is moving in the positive side. And it's going to produce an 11th harmonic which is moving in the opposite direction. Now for the rotor side, same calculation just like this because rotor is also going to have slots and even if those slots are a cage machine type or a slippering machine type, this is going to be present everywhere because you are going to have those slots over there every time. So in this case for the order of harmonics, So this time this will be 2SR by P plus minus 1. So if I just plug in now the value of SR, you know, this is equal to 28. So this will be 2 into 28 divided by 4 plus minus 1. If you just do this one, this is 14 plus minus 1. So this is going to be coming out as 14 plus 1. This will be 15 harmonic and 14 minus 1, 13 harmonic in the opposite direction. So what is this telling me? The stator is producing... 13th harmonic positive and 11th harmonic negative direction of the fundamental and the rotor is producing 15th harmonic in the positive and 13th harmonic in the negative. Now this four harmonics we have to choose that which two harmonics are going to actually produce the synchronous, this is very important, the synchronous torque inside your machine. Now, since these are going to be produced because of harmonics, so we are going to add another word inside the start and we are going to call it as the harmonic synchronous torques. Now, if you go back to your uh, machine scores or before your study, we know about your synchronous machine. What was synchronous machine? Synchronous machine was that you were having a locking between the stator and the rotor poles. So the machine was always going to move at a constant speed. So if you are applying supposedly a 1500 RPM from the stator side, the revolving magnetic field, the rotor will match that and will continue to move with that same 1500 RPM speed at that point. Now in this case, because now you have produced harmonics and those harmonics are 13th harmonic here in this case and 13th harmonic in the rotor case. Yes, they both are moving in opposite direction. I will come to that at the next lecture. But just for now, these two harmonics, 13th from the stator side, which is moving in the positive direction, and 13th 
in the rotor which is moving in the opposite direction to the fundamental they both will have a locking now one question which will arise in your mind at present why the 13th and the 15th harmonic from the rotor they can't have a locking because the 13th harmonic will be having a different number of poles than the 15th harmonic in the rotor we want to have the same number of poles in the stator and the rotor then the locking can occur so if you have the same order of harmonic in the stator because this is coming from the stator this is coming from the rotor you are going to have the harmonic talk or harmonic synchronous talks being produced because of the 13th harmonic inside the stator and 13th harmonic inside the rotor over there this is uh, all for just for this lecture hopefully the next lecture we will talk about in much detail how this harmonic synchronous torque is going to be produced and this is going to give rise to a very important concept which we have also seen previously in the space harmonic that is called as crawling okay so again you are going to see some sub speed known as crawling please remember crawling is a very general phenomena giving to that uh, speed at which the machine does not work at a designated speed and it starts to work at a very very small speed so instead of running it's actually crawling so it's going to be a some sub synchronous speed over there certainly one thing very important it will not be ns by 13 it will not be ns by 13 it will be some other speed why because these are going to move in different direction this is positive this is negative and certainly there is going to be some relative speeds coming into play for this one so what we have done just today we have seen that by the slots introduced inside your machine whatever that slot number the mmf waveform is going to be having harmonics riding on it because of the change in reluctance and this is that bh and that bh can be formulated as bm sine of theta what is bm sine of theta that is actually the amplitude this amplitude cover which i have shown over here as purple color and then the sine of 2s by p into theta is actually the harmonic that is actually riding inside it but when we are going to combine these two and do all that calculations over there which we have done over there the simple uh, cosine formula over there the sum of cosine terms so you get on whatever is the order of harmonics that is 2s by p plus minus 1. So let's see in the next lecture what we have to do. Thank you.